the difference between pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD, and pre-implantation genetic screening, PGS, is that with PGD, strictly speaking, the geneticists are looking for a very specific abnormality in the embryo. It may be a single gene, like for cystic fibrosis, or it may be a very specific chromosomal abnormality that exists in, in one of the parents. PGS, or pre-implantation genetic screening, looks at a wider number of chromosomal abnormalities, looking for so-called monosomy, where there's a missing pair of one of the chromosomes, trisomy, where there's an extra chromosome rather than, than just two of them, and looking for this across anywhere between nine chromosomes and all 23 or 24. PGD is, is properly used when there is information on the couple that both of them share a common recessive genetic mutation. It can also be used where one of the, co one of the parents has a dominant trait that would also result in a high probability of an abnormal baby. So that G the PGD is going to look for embryos that are affected by either the dominant gene mutation or by both parents' contribution to a, a recessive gene mutation. Um, if either parent has a so-called structural chromosomal abnormality, sometimes called a translocation or an inversion, um, that is a very specific abnormality that the, um, that the geneticist would look for rather than just looking across all of them. In the PGS situation, that generally for an, an individual or a couple, I should say, where there is a higher risk of a chromosomal abnormality that may have already been found, for example, a, a fetus or a child with Down syndrome or one of the other trisomies where there's been a, a pregnancy loss or even a delivery of an unexpectedly abnormal fetus. It's also used as a screening technique for women who are at higher risk for having um, a chromosomally abnormal fetus, such as a woman who has had prior miscarriages uh, where a chromosomal abnormality has been detected or unexplained multiple miscarriages, or in the woman who is in the age group where the expectation of a miscarriage is increased. And many people use 37 or 38 at that point, but there's some evidence that, that leads us to believe that any individual who is concerned about an abnormal fetus may actually benefit from PGS. The idea here being that the pregnancy that would ensue from a tested embryo would have a better chance of implanting, and if it does implant, would have a much better chance of becoming a normal pregnancy and not miscarrying. 